So you're thinking about going on your first cruise vacation by yourself? You probably have a few questions. I know I certainly did when I went on my very first solo cruise years ago. Hey everybody, it's Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. And I'm a solo traveler. For the most part, I'm going on cruises myself. There's nobody, as you can see, in my room with me. It's great. I get to film whatever I want to. Uh, but it, it's a different way of cruising, right? And if you're looking on going on a solo cruise, you probably have a few questions. And so I'm going to try to make a good frequently asked questions FAQ document or video for all of you to be able to read about some of the questions you may have if you're thinking about going on your first solo cruise. The first thing we need to talk about is get an understanding of what is a single supplement and double occupancy. So pricing for cruises for a single person, they're not always kind to us. So staterooms on cruise ships are often rented with two people in the room. You book it with two people, double occupancy. If you were only one person, you're still gonna pay for two people, though they price it as per person. But when you go to check out as a solo, if you're not careful, you'll pay for the full second person. That is called the single supplement. They charge a single supplement because you're the only person in the room. They charge that extra to get you to the double amount. And oftentimes it is a full 100% of what that second person would be, which kind of seems unfair. I kind of get it, but kind of seems unfair as well. So how do you avoid paying double to go on your cruise? There's a few things that you can do here. The first one is make sure that you're flexible. So if you're looking at different cruise lines, at different sail dates, at different itineraries, ports of call that you're going to, or even ports that you're sailing out of, be flexible because you can find some deals where you're paying for just yourself or you can pay at a reduced amount. So sometimes a cruise line might not necessarily say that, hey, we're not gonna charge a single supplement, we'll only charge for just you. There are some cruise lines that'll say, we'll charge 50% for the second person, which is still gonna save you a good chunk of money if you can find a deal like that. Oftentimes they will run promotions. So make sure you're also keeping your ear to Facebook and to other cruise groups that will alert you to when a cruise line is running a discount or a single supplement special where they're not gonna charge you or they're not gonna charge the full thing. The other thing you can consider is staying loyal to a cruise line. Royal Caribbean in particular here is great for at 340 points in their Crown and Anchor Society, you're gonna only pay 150% of your cruise. So instead of paying the full 200% or 100% for each person, you're only going to pay 50% for the second person. So if you cruise a lot like I do, it will save you a ton of money. Also, make sure you are planning well in advance. So let's talk about solo cabins. A lot of people say find solo cabins, and I struggle with this some. There's some cruise lines such as Norwegian cruise lines that, you know, has really marketed their solo cabins and their solo suites, which I think can be a great deal. I've never personally tried it, but heard people had great experiences there. But what I find interesting about solo cabins is it's dynamic pricing like all the other cabins. So if you've only got four solo cabins, they don't have a lot of these guys. There's only four of them on, um, let's say, Celebrity Silhouette that I've been looking at recently. There's four solo cabins. Once one of those is booked, it looks like 25% of that cabin is booked. Once two of them is booked, they're saying 50% is already booked. Like, you know, we've got to raise the price on this. And so you may wind up seeing that those solo cabins will cost more than just a basic inside cabin with you paying double the money. The next thing you're going to want to do is find yourself a good search engine for cruises. So you're also going to want to make sure you have a good travel agent that you're going to use, specifically one that specializes in solo cruising to help you feel comfortable and answer your questions. But you're going to want to use cruiseplum.com for your searches. This is the best search tool that I have found for um, finding a solo cruise because you're able to go through it's very, it's extremely powerful. So it makes the user interface a little tricky sometimes because there's a lot of options, but it's going to give you a lot of options around do you want to go on a solo cruise and what's the price going to be for you to do that. And so it'll give you the all in taxes and everything number. So it's a really cool, powerful tool to use that I personally recommend for anyone who's looking on going on a cruise and you're really good with using filters and sort options to find what you're looking for. So after you've booked your cruise, you found the one you want to go in, you know, the next thing is probably your anxiety is going to rack it up a little bit because you're going on a trip by yourself. How exciting. 
Not at first it's not. It's actually quite scary and it, there can be a lot of anxiety that comes into it. I remember my first time when I waited. This was on Empress of the Seas probably six years ago that I did uh, my very first solo cruise and I was anxious, you all. Like, I had never done anything like that. I've never gone on a vacation by myself before, but I'd come on a few cruises. I'd seen how easy it was and I said, you know what? Let's give it a try. So is it anxious? Yeah, it really is anxious. But I'll also say that if you can get yourself to the ship, it'll be a whole game changer. It'll be one of the most freeing things that you have ever done. And you'll probably be like me and that anxiety is gonna just melt away and turn into, I don't wanna say a cruise addiction, but definitely wanting to go back and do it again. You see how easy it is. And then comes the first moment. This is probably one of the items that's going to cause the most anxiety for a solo cruiser is, how do you get food? What are your dining options and what are you doing for food? And there's a lot of thoughts that are out there on this. My personal recommendation, if you're coming on a cruise for the first time by yourself, is go to the main dining room and request a large table. I think most of the fear anxiety that I personally had when I started was that people would see me eating by myself and they would look at me funny or something like that. And so I found that if I was at a larger table or sat with other people, you know, nobody outside of that table knows that you're cruising by yourself. And it's really over to come in those tables where you've got six, eight, nine other people sitting with you um, to overcome the cruising by yourself because you wind up just being another table mate that you get to know. So if you like people, you can sit at one of these larger tables and it'll help with some of the anxiety on people looking at you strange because you're sitting by yourself. Though don't fret, if you don't want to sit with people, make sure that you're asking not to sit with people. So as soon as you get on, go to the maitre d' in the main dining room and say, hey, I just kind of want a table for two. I'd like to sit by myself if that's at all possible. And you're going to have still a great experience. If nothing else, this is a quicker experience. When you eat with others, you can expect to be in there for a while. But when you eat with yourself, I think the wait staff knows that you don't need that much time in between meals and they keep it coming, which I personally love. Your third option here, and I think that this will probably be the easiest option. So if you really do have some anxiety around eating and dining by yourself, I recommend the buffet of the cruise ship that you're on here on Royal Caribbean where I am today. That is the Wind Jammer. That's where I go oftentimes just because it's super easy. Like you walk up there, you grab what you want, you eat, and you're out. There's also a lot of other people that will just eat by themselves. Maybe a family member didn't want to come with them or there's more solo people up there. Um, so you're not going to feel out of place at the wind chambers. I would stay away from specialty restaurants for your first couple of solo cruises. I think that that's an advanced solo cruising strategy because you've got to be really comfortable eating in a high-end or nicer restaurant and sitting by yourself where everybody else is having like these romantic dinners and you're sitting there and being like, oh my God, this steak is great and you're just devouring it. Um, so I would say leave that off for a few cruises. If you want to jump on into it, feel free to. For me, that's something that took a little while to get into um, specialty dining as a solo passenger. Now, what is the best cruise ship for you to be able to start solo cruising? Are they all created equal? And I would say that that's gonna depend on what you are going for here. A lot of solo cruisers go for different reasons. So me personally, I love going on these smaller ships. Even to this day, I still like going on smaller ships because I feel like I'm part of a community. I get to know people and see people on the ship all the time. I meet people consistently. It is a great way to meet people. However, if you kind of just want to come on the ship, be a number, blend in with the crowd, you're going to want to look towards an Oasis or Quantum class ship that is going to be on the larger side. In this place, you'll be able to disappear amongst all the people. You're looking at traveling with 6,000 of your closest friends plus crew members on board, and it's really easy to fly under the radar and to not be noticed if that's what you're going for. But if you're like me and you kind of like meeting people, you're going to want to go on a smaller ship where you're almost insured to be able to run into the same people consistently. And I mentioned this one earlier, but you know, people are going to look at you funny and that is just a fact of life. People see somebody doing something that they can never envision themselves doing and they're going to kind of scratch their head a little bit and they're going to have questions. And so you will find that people will look at you funny from time to time. But trust me, it does not happen very often. Luckily, most people on a cruise are kind of busy in their own bubble with their own friends, and they're not gonna pay you a bit of mind. Where I see the most engagement or the most looks is back to that dining option. If you were sitting in a 
main dining room on a cruise ship, you're probably going to be sitting beside of a lot of different people. And it's going to be more noticeable in that environment that you were traveling by yourself. So be prepared in that main dining room to engage with the person beside of you. Not that you're going to start that conversation, but they're probably going to see you by yourself and they're just going to start chatting you up because they see a problem that they need to solve or they take pity on you. I don't know why people do this. Um, or maybe it's just in their nature to offer comfort. I personally don't mind it. I'm not always in a chatty Cathy mood, contrary to popular belief. Um, most of the time, I'm more than you know happy to engage some people. I don't always start that conversation though. If somebody's at a table for two beside him, a table for four, I don't always start that conversation. But what I will say is that if you are somebody who wants to meet people, when you start a conversation on a cruise ship, you're part of a community. You feel like you're kind of all in this together. People are going to talk back to you. They might you know, engage you for five minutes, but they're not going to just shun you and think that you're weird for doing that. Um, they're going to have a conversation with you, maybe go back to eating, or maybe you just made lifelong friends. I mean, there's a huge gamut there, but I can't tell you how many lifelong friends that I've made from just coming on cruises and talking to people at the dinner table. Now, if you are an extrovert or you just want to meet people on the ship, where are the best places for you to do this? The first place that I will tell you to do this is at the bar. Now, it doesn't mean you have to drink. I don't drink and I'll go sit at the bar. Um, but people are just more friendly when they're at the bar, the pool, a lounge area, places that are designed for people to gather. They're more open to conversations. And again, if you start up a conversation, you'll see that that person will probably engage you back but also be prepared to be engaged by others because we're all part of a community here. If you're sitting at a bar with others, chances are the person beside of you is gonna start talking to you or you're all start having a conversation with the bartender. The bartenders here are very good. And I think, I don't know if they're trained on helping people be able to make those connections, knowing how important it is to some of our satisfactions of the cruise, um, but they're actually gonna wind up helping you meet some of those people as well. Another option that you can do is trivia. Now this is an easy way to meet people in a small group environment because trivia teams are often like four to six people, I think, and they are in the morning, unfortunately. So you gotta be a little bit of a morning person for this, um, but go there by yourself and there'll be teams that be like, oh, you can come and, and join us. I've never seen anyone not get on a team unless you know that you're really good and you just wanna win for yourself. You can totally be on your own team. But this is a great way for you to meet others, build some relationships. So next time when you see them around the ship, you'll be able to say hello to them. I would also say do shore excursions on the cruise ship. So if you are on a cruise ship, again, part of that community, if you go on a shore excursion, go on a smaller one if you can find a small group shore excursion. If not, a big one's fine. But you're all gonna be from the ship and you're gonna get to spend quality time with other people from the ship. Again, meeting people, building relationships, and giving you the ability to then see them on the cruise ship and see, you know, say hello to them. I've even had other people be like, oh, well, I'm doing this cruise tomorrow. You should totally come and join us. Not cruise, excursion. Though I probably would totally stay on a back-to-back -back if somebody invited me. Um, they invite me on the excursion the next day, and so I sign up for it or switch the one that I have because I met some really cool people that I want to continue hanging out with. So you're going to find that that sense of community is really strong when you go on an excursion, and it's a great way to build additional relationships. Now, if you're still looking at doing your first solo cruise and you're uncertain about it, there's still a lot of anxiety, there are ways to go on a solo cruise and not go by yourself. So what I'm talking about here is group cruises and charters. So if you find a group cruise, like the Weekend Cruiser Group Cruise that's coming up on November 3rd on the Lord of the Seas, join us. You'll automatically have a small community of people that you can you know, hang out with, get to know. But there's other cruise vloggers out here. I might not be your cup of tea or maybe you want to do a longer sailing. I totally get it. Um, find another cruise vlogger who's also doing, you know, a group cruise that you can come and join. The people are always fantastic when they go on one of these cruises. Or maybe you want to stay away from that and you want to go the route of a charter. They've got music charter, festival charters, art charters, you name it, they've got a charter for you. They've got some crazy ones out there depending on what you're into. But that is another great way to go on a cruise by yourself, but to know you're automatically going to be all heavy metal fans. I mean, there's a great community out there and you'll fit right in and more easily make friends because not only do you love cruising, but you also have the charter in common as well. All right, so those are my quick hits on frequently asked questions, FAQs for your first solo cruise. If I did not answer your question, leave it down in the comments. I am more than happy. I love answering comments. And it might give me another video idea that I can talk about how you can enjoy your first solo cruise. 
All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you being empowered and going on your very first solo cruise.